don't use yourself the way you are. Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. That's where I stopped. True God is where I stop. What makes your prayer potent is Christ in you. What makes your fasting potent is Christ in you. So the spiritual activity that you are doing, huh? the, the activity you are doing, the power of the activity is not in the activity. The power of the activity is through God. It's because of Christ in you. That's why that activity is potent in the realm of the spirit. That's why it can bring down a demon. That's why it can cast down a shadow. It's not through you. It's what? Through God. It's a normal thing you'll be doing, but the potency of that normal thing that you're doing becomes potent because it is through God, not through you. For instance, Moses now comes and um, he didn't even have all the details of what he was contending with when he was about to um, go through the Red Sea. There were other possible routes that they could have taken. There were other possible routes that could be taken. In fact, from Egypt to Canaan, was a six day journey for any feeble man. Why God insisted that they would go through the belly of the Red Sea was known to him. And at that time, there were many details that Moses did not understand. He took a prophet many years later to reveal the reason why the Red Sea was the only option available for God. Because if you are going to discomfit Pharaoh, the power of Pharaoh was sourced from beneath the Red Sea. It was Ezekiel that revealed that the power of Pharaoh was sourced from a dragon that lieth in the midst of the rivers. And so if Pharaoh's dominion was going to be brought to an abrupt end, then there was going to be some form of warfare. Uh, at some point, they will have to meet the reality re behind the throne of Egypt. And that reality was in the belly of the sea. And so God now told his prophet, stretch forth your rod. Are you with me? Yes, you know, when you take, <coughs> you know it looks foolish. This was all Moses had to do. You take your rod and you do what? That's all he did. Meanwhile, in the book of Psalms, David was revealing to us the things that happened from God's end. When Moses stretched forth his rod, David began to sing by prophecy. He stumbled upon it by revelation. He said, by the blast of your nostrils, you parted the Red Sea. So, when Moses stretched his rod, he provoked God to do... <laughs> Somebody say, true God. true God. You know that foolish thing that Moses was doing? He might say, I'm a great man of God because now some... It has nothing to do with him. It has everything to do what? Through God. Now, so the things that God will be leading you to do in a spiritual warfare scenario might be very foolish. But the power in what you are doing is not in what you are doing. The power in what you are doing is mighty through God. So Moses was stretching the rod in the natural and God blasted his nostrils in the supernatural and then the sea began to part. That blasting that took place overhead, you always see in every battle scenario, there's always something happening on the natural plane and there's always something happening where? On the supernatural plane. And one of the people that knew this so much was David. David knew that not all the soldiers that fought for Israel were human beings. He knew that. And that's one of the lessons that God was trying to teach um, Joshua. Joshua, you will be wrong not to know the reality of the armies of Israel. And so when Joshua, you know, conquered here, conquered there, conquered there, and at some point he was beginning to think that he was a mighty general. Hallelujah. Because anywhere he turns like this, he, he brings them down. Until they met Jericho. Jericho was te technically impossible to take. Because it happens to be that the walls of Jericho, the thickness, eh? you know, people like Rahab, the wall was the foundation of Rahab's house. And Bible history says that um, the width of uh, the walls of Jericho was so much that seven war horses could ride conveniently side by side. How do you take that kind of nation? And the walls of Jericho in military terms had never been breached before. So that was the end of his, his tactics. He had no way out. When he had come to his wit's end, God now said, well, there are several things I've been trying to show you, but you have been so busy, you have been fighting, you didn't care to consult. Many times you think it's your muscles that make it happen. Use your muscle now. When he yielded, hallelujah, then God now moved him. 
only for him to see the similitude of the captain of the other side. That was the day it dawned on him that there was a supernatural army that was moving with the natural army. You see, the greatest thing you will need to learn is how to synchronize. Many of you, there are angels attached to you that have never operated. They have never moved. They have never... Oh my. Not because you are not powerful. You are just... You think you are the one doing it. But the Bible says it through God. His greatest challenge was his ability to synchronize. And in order for him to learn how to synchronize, you know, the angel came when he went, met the angel, came with his sword like this. And he spoke like a warrior. Say, Are you for us or against us? Then the angel said, Nay. None of the above. You didn't finish all the sides. You think, you think, uh, it's only you and then the oppo opposing side that exists. No, there's another side. It's called the Lord's side. And I'm on the Lord's side. I don't know where you are, but I know I'm on the Lord's side. And if we go into battle and I see you cooperating with the directive we have received from the Lord, you might find me helping you. But if you move out of line, my sword will be the first to do damage to this your big head. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. After that kind of salutation, he now pulled his hand up. I said, and then the instruction that came from God was that he, he, you have spoken too much in one day. Because you talk, talk, talk like this. In seven days, don't talk again. Keep quiet. And here, the march past of the invisible army. The major... Are you with me? Like, just like my brother couldn't hear the march past. The Holy Spirit fired the song into his spirit. He didn't know that that was the only song. He was supposed to rest there. Then he took up... You know, he did rehearsal in the night. I heard of the rehearsal. And they rehearse songs, the guys on the keyboard, everybody had diversity, and they were basking in the Holy Ghost. So he could not he could not discern that if he stays on that song, he will be synchronizing with the armies of heaven. It's very easy to walk in the supernatural. Just find out where the Holy Ghost is. It's, and there are different ways of knowing based on how he has trained you. My own, if I get that guy there, I will know. Once he plays that thing. Please, 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 please. Ah, I will find out. If you don't have a way of finding out, you are a weak man. You can't survive this thing that we are talking about. Because you hide yourself before you show yourself. Many of you, you just went out. You were naked. You just say, eh, whoa, whoa. That's why they struck you. Because it's, you are, it's not mighty because of you. It's mighty through God. Hallelujah. So there's a burden to synchronize. It's a burden to synchronize. When he began to go around the world, the first day he did not understand the gist. Went around the world, the second day didn't. After some time, he started hearing the, mass, the match pass of the invisible army. So he got his army to synchronize. And by the time he shouted on the seventh day, it was the kind of shout that the angels can understand. That's what we call Shabak. There are seven words for praise in the book of Psalms. The last one is Shabak. Is the shout that touches the depth of the human belly. That kind of shout, you cannot shout it in the flesh. You can't even muster the capacity to do a shabak in the flesh. Have you ever been in high in spirit and the only way you could get ventilation was to shout? Ah, yeah, coma. <laughs> I, you people want me to preach, but I, will, I, I resist it. I came to teach. You are releasing preaching unction. Hallelujah. Shabak, it touches here. When they did that Shabak, then the angels advanced first. Because the wall of Jericho was a cuboid. You know a cube of sugar? That's how it was. If it falls, it is still the same height. Falls here, it is still the same height. The walls did not fall. The walls submerged. The angels stamped on it. Archaeologists have discovered that. The walls entered into the ground. So the angels did only what the physical army could not do. That's the only thing they did. If you are going to preach, huh? and there's a crippled person, and the Holy Ghost is saying, minister to the people. You are moved like this. Eh? He won't let you move. Remember, the angels will only do only what you cannot do. At least you can pray for the person. And if you see that the person is not moving, and you know you were led, you can take a step further and attempt to what? 
to raise the person. All of that is in your power. They won't do that for you. But when you do what you can do, then the blast of the no streets. That's how warfare is. It's partnership. Partnership of men, angels, and their father who is God. It's in this regard that the Bible calls you um, um, a weapon of war. You need to synchronize with the dynamics, the frequency of the power and the spirit of God. 